Yeah. All the lights are coming on now. How I wish that it would snow now. I don't feel like going home now. I wish that I could stay. All the trees are on display now. And it's cold. that I could stay I wish that I could stay I wish that I could walk you home All the lights are coming on now How I wish that it would snow now I don't feel like going home I wish that I could stay Santa's coming to town With sequins in his hair Santa's coming to town With sequins in his hair like to think that we're to blame for all this snow because we've been practicing that song all week so we've been saying how I wish that it would snow and yay it snowed <laughs> it's a tune out of Denmark by the Ravenettes one of our favorite Christmas bands and bands in general if you haven't checked them out you've got to that's not an order or anything just a friendly suggestion sorry <laughs> So the next song is a winter song that we wrote a couple years ago, uh, and we don't get to do it much uh, during the summer, uh, so we'd like to do it for you tonight. It's called Wintertown. Just because I'm a fool for the winter And the long cold nights beside my green mountain girl I used to live for the working From 
sunrise to sundown But now we wait for the stars to shine And we get so tired when the day comes around So I'll stay where it's quiet Where the snow's the ground Where the nights last forever But the hearts are still Because you are the summer Please don't leave this winter town It's all right, call me crazy I will be the first one to agree I've known it for so long now It doesn't even get to me This ground, it was born secret Pure, wild and free See, that's what the ghosts of the Abenaki Have been whispering to me
just want to especially say thank you to Vincent for having it. Vincent Freeman, who's the owner and operator of the Underground Recording Studio. Thank him for having us here tonight because, boy, um, we haven't played live music since it got cold out. And the last attempt that we had to make a live stream appearance on the internet was a disaster. So <laughs> this is a real pleasure to just show up and play. And uh, thank you for inviting us and uh, for managing all of the camera work and all the interwebs. We really appreciate it. Um, and thank you all for joining us. I don't know uh, who's out there tonight, but hopefully you're nestled nice and cozy in your houses after the snowstorm. And uh, we are delighted to sled down the hill to come into Randolph with all the lights. And it looked so beautiful. There was a gorgeous sunset. And uh, we're pretty, feeling pretty blessed about where we live. So it's a joy to be here. That would be helpful. <laughs> there's, there's the glitch for you for tonight. Hopefully that's all we got. <laughs> So we wanted to pull one out from our first record. It's called Let Fall the Fine. Um, just because it's been a downtime for a lot of folks and, well, pretty much everybody. And we wanted to do a couple of tunes to just encourage uh, all of you lovelies that, uh, you know, we'll get through this. Um, somehow, mm -hmm. with each other. Trouble comes so soon, riding in behind the August moon. A life of love, dreams going under sunny hearts, swimming down. Summer's last kiss on a new moon field. Other magnolias. We didn't need the spirit cold before the set in We didn't need the ice to hold the song It took so long to begin A new blush on the apples Tree fingers Touching the ground Sometimes the hardest times bring in the sweetest Sometimes the worst times let fall the fine Sometimes the bad times are the good times Later on, when you taste them again You remember
king of Antares and the winter king who falls to the ground. Only walking the winter's places will bring another summer back around. So Lord, speed on. The worst times that fall in the fire. Sometimes the bad times are the good times. Later on, later on. Sometimes the hardest times bring in the sweetest. Sometimes the worst times that fall. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we wish you all sweetness. Sweetness after the hard times. that we missed this year because of um, our current, I'm not even going to say it, you all know what I'm talking about, but we, we have done a Christmas show at the Wild Fern for the last couple of years, and that has been a blast and something that we really, really, really missed this year. So we really felt, I um, actually tried to book uh, with Vincent in November, and it just, it didn't work out. So. Um, when he had this slot available this week, we got really excited because it's quite close to Christmas. So um, we were able to bring out some Christmas tunes for you all, and um, we got one here for you right now. Santa baby, just slip a sable under the tree for me. Been an awful good girl, Santa baby, so hurry down the chimney tonight. Santa baby, a 54 convertible to light blue. I'll wait up for you, dear Santa baby, so hurry down the chimney tonight. Think of all the fun I've missed. Think of all the fellas that I haven't kissed. Next year I could be just as good if you my Christmas list Santa baby I want a yacht and really that's not a lot been an angel all year 
Santa baby So hurry down the chimney tonight Santa honey One little thing I really do need The deed To a platinum mine Santa honey So hurry down the chimney tonight Santa cutie And fill my stocking with a duplex And checks Sign your ex on the line Santa cutie And hurry down the chimney tonight Come and trim my Christmas tree With some decorations bought at Tiffany's I really do believe in you Let's see if you believe in me bo bo be do Santa honey Forgot to mention one little thing A ring And I don't mean on the phone, Santa baby, so hurry down the chimney tonight, oh hurry down the chimney tonight, hurry tonight. A song called Half a Mile, it's about uh, being far away from your family, mm-hmm. and uh, that's a hard thing right now. So, just play it for purely selfish reasons to try to cheer ourselves up. Uh, Kara wrote this a uh, couple years, uh, four years ago, I guess, and uh, on the first record that David Goldsworthy uh, produced for us, right here in Randolph. Let's just hope I don't cry. How about that? (laughs) All right, people. Thank you, huh? Yes. (laughs) Seems like only yesterday You were by my side Walking dusty roads and singing songs Sunny days, starlit nights Sitting by a fire Wishing I could stay awake all night If only we could shrink the miles Between you and me I'd feast upon the side of Constantly And over miles we had grown apart Each of us pursuing different dreams But no matter how far I roam You are always there Always trying to see yourself in me Packages and late night phone calls Help to see me through Until the next time I wrap my arms around you
I still dream of days to come When we've all grown old Living in a house next door to you I've taken walks on dusty roads Or sitting by a fire With nothing left to do but talk all night Not even half a mile Between you and me Feasting on the side of your sweet faces constantly summers ago. Um, it's on our latest record called Lay Me Down. And we have a bunch of tunes, almost enough for our third recording, <laughs> which we'd like to get started on uh, soon. Either that or a Christmas album, I'm telling you. Right, we, we have the Christmas We really, um, we've, we've got some Christmas songs and even some, some originals that Andy's going to play for you tonight for the first time which will be really fun. Yeah. But yeah, let's do Lay Me Down. Okay. Okay. Relentless longing for it and lost Carved from the clay and the dust Lay me down Underneath the starry sky With the wind in my face Suspended between earth and sky Wrapped in the earth's embrace It's an old worn path we walk upon We can find our way in the dark Leaves whisper secrets beneath our feet Secrets the time left behind Nothing more than north and south Nothing but this pool in my breast I don't know how long I've been gone But take me back to where I belong Lay me down Underneath the starry sky With the wind in my face Suspended between earth and sky And when I die My soul flies away Oh, let me rise 
Cross my weary bones Wrapped in the earth's sound what the time is when we're playing ever but <laughs> Vincent has a special clock here so we know exactly what time it is <laughs> <laughs> and it's really nice to play knowing that um, we're not just in our own house playing that there are actually people uh, participating I cannot believe how difficult it is as songwriters to play always locked in our house uh, never have had that experience before in our lives and it is uh, very difficult uh, so we are really grateful to be able to share this time with you uh, in this special time mm. hello everybody hi everybody <laughs> We miss your faces very much. Yeah, it's kind of odd. We, I grew up um, playing country music and went into punk in high school, which I still love. And then I met Kara and we started doing, I studied jazz, so we, we did jazz together and musical theater tunes. Um, and then we've sort of um, turned towards folk uh, and songwriting the past decade or so. Uh, but Tonight, maybe fortunately or unfortunately, we get to do it <laughs> sort of all for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that's hard for me with folk is that uh, when, when we were in the punk rock scene years and years ago, it didn't really matter how you sounded vocally. And that's sort of never anything I've been able to get over. <laughs> so I'm learning Kara's a good teacher. <laughs> so this is one... Well, you'll know it, yeah. <laughs> i 
Christmas tree Won't be the same, dear If you're not here with me And when those blue snowflakes Start falling that's when those blue memories start calling You'll be doing alright With your Christmas of white But I'll have a I'll have a blue Christmas that's certain and when that blue heartache starts hurting But I'll have a blue, 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 blue Christmas. <laughs>song we've done once live it was uh, last Christmas at the Sprague Ranch in East Randolph um, they had these great Christmas parties for the village that we missed this year um, it's called Benny uh, wish me luck let's see if we can remember it we've been playing it this week so are you doing okay you're doing that first okay uh, what were you thinking of no, 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 sorry no. I was thinking Oh yeah. Okay. I've got your sleigh bells for you. Got you covered. So usually Kara plays bass on this, but um, my bass kind of broke into it ten pieces this week when she was playing it. Um, <laughs> that doesn't sound good. So Sounds I'm like I might have been the cause of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta watch her. I'm telling you. She's, these Jennings girls. The snow was coming down so white There were diamonds in the air Shone over us like some green mountain prayer Christmas music on the radio And happy people on TV 
But there were too many places where I was supposed to be I got some Friday money to buy some presents for the tree But what once was enough don't seem to last as long to me Where have all the old U-tides gone? What has happened to you and me? Why am I so sad and low when I'm not supposed to be? So Benny, I didn't But Benny, I didn't know That Christmas could hurt so bad Last year So this year let's throw our car keys in the river And go out dancing in the snow And come and lie by the fire And watch the Christmas tree lights glow Maybe open just a couple little presents Put on some coffee and then you know Hold on tight to each other And let another year just go I don't need a lot of money I don't need the latest thing I don't want someone to tell me That I need more of anything To hear now and I'll sing and a long slow Christmas like the way they used to be. I think I hear Santa yes. coming early this year. Thank you. Thank you. Second time. Second time. Third time's a charm, right? Anyway, as my great grandfather would have said, no le criel, which is uh, Merry Christmas in Scottish Gaelic. To you. Yeah. Um. Should we do. Um, Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Little Gen Mac conference there. <laughs> Andy is actually um, the master of song and set lists. And it's, it's one of the things that uh, I miss is his concoctions of different set lists. Uh, so we, we had some, uh, we knew what our time kind of frame was, of what we needed to work with tonight, and we, uh, we certainly had some songs that were must-dos, but he's, he's thrown me some curveballs tonight. So that's been fun to play some of the, some of the originals that we, we haven't played for a while. So This is another one of Andy's. This is an original, and this was on our 2019 release, uh, and it's, 
it was also it was also a, a song that we got to record um, with my sister and my both my sisters and uh, one of my sisters my sister's partner and we had a fabulous impromptu recording. Uh, thank you. You're good. Keezy, you need to plug in. <laughs> <laughs> Get, get in the head enough. Look what happens. Thank you, Vincent. Uh, anyway, we um, we recorded it again for the album with just the two of us, and uh, it's called Somebody. I don't know if uh, our friend John Lapore is watching or not, uh, but if he is, we wanted to dedicate this to him. Belated birthday, John. Somebody, anybody, won't somebody say hello? Say, how are you? It's nice to see you. Put your hand on my shoulder It's been too long Since I saw somebody smile My brother My sister too long I'm having trouble with all the struggle It's hard to be human in this world I know there's a light at the end of this darkness So somehow we got to keep holding on It's been too long Since we held the hand of our neighbor my brother, my sister too long I'm gonna find a way To walk down this road beside you If I could help you carry what weighs you down And if your light is fading, can't you hear me when I'm calling out? Just put your arms around me and hang on. I feel lonely, like I feel lonely, especially when you're in a crowd. One kind word might be enough to save you. That's why I'm gonna tell you how beautiful you are. It's been too long. Since we danced in the streets together My brother, my sister too long Gonna find a way to walk down this road beside 
beside you I could help you carry what weighs you down And if your light is fading Can't you hear me when I'm calling out Just put your arms around me And hang your arms around me and hang on Thank you. Very sweet. Top of that. <laughs> that is sweet. We're a little bit giddy here. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be giddy, but I am. Fifteen minutes ago, Sherry wrote, "Oh, that smooth, sultry voice." Ooh. Which one was she talking about? <laughs> I've never been called that. <laughs> it's got to be Kara. <laughs> But for Sherry, I'll try. <laughs> he is in rare form, people. Let's let's be a little careful here. We got to tread lightly. <laughs> tread lightly with the comments. McCumber's on a. Oh, he's a loose cannon. <sighs> Crazy Celts. <laughs> Can't keep a hold of ourselves. <laughs> Yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a Merry little Christmas Make the Yuletide gay From now on Our troubles will be miles away Here we are As in olden days Happy golden days, Leo. Faithful friends who are dear to us, gather near to us once more. Through the years, we all will be together. If the fates allow, hang a shining star upon the highest bough, and have yourself a merry little Christmas now. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. 
from now on our troubles will be miles away here we are as in olden days happy golden days of your faithful friends who are dear to us gather near to us once more someday soon we all will be together if the fates allow hang a shining star upon Merry Christmas, my people. <laughs> Thank you. I heard uh, I was driving back from town this afternoon, earlier this afternoon, and uh, I heard Judy Garland's version of that, and <laughs> oh. I was just about dead by the time I got home. <laughs> Okay, so last one for you. Uh, it's another original uh, that we'd like to record called Even If. Gotta wait for Santa here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna multitask here. But this goes to everybody, and I mean everyone, at Christmas. Even if, even if, even if, this Christmas, you don't got somebody. This Christmas, you're still somebody for somebody. This Christmas, even if. Even if Even if This Christmas You're not with somebody That your dream you're still somebody or someone this Christmas. And all the pretty lights, all the dreams and The snow falling from the sky are still for you tonight. 
even if, even if, even if, this Christmas, you are alone, this Christmas. Somebody somewhere wants you as bad as you do This Christmas And all the pretty lights All the dreams and The snow falling from the sky Are still for you tonight This Christmas <laughs> Good evening, folks. Uh, my name is Jamie Gage. I'm here uh, at the Underground Studios in Randolph, Vermont. Thank you to Vincent Freeman, the uh, purveyor and owner of these studios. And I'm here with Jennings and McComber. We just followed a, a great performance from this incredible folk duo from central vermont welcome thank you thank jamie. you jamie thank you <laughs> very much thanks We've, for yeah coming out in this crazy snowstorm <laughs> yes we do have a little bit of uh, i think i i can speak for myself i'm smiling for a lot mm -hmm. of reasons so grateful for live music mm. quality music really high quality great music thank and you. uh snow Yes, no, yeah. in Vermont. Lots of it. Yeah. Little sketchy out there on the roads. How was yeah. the drive in? Um, well, I came, I was telling Vincent, I actually, I got my hair done, especially for this occasion. And I came <laughs> in earlier today. And I think Route 14, where we come from, I was not able to go more than, I think I topped out at 28 miles an hour. <laughs> And yeah. you could tell exactly where the town line was because the plowing um, changed. And I was able to get up to about 35. <laughs> but it was, it was dicey. And I, you know, I, I definitely plowed myself out of the driveway. It was pretty crazy. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, without indicting any particular towns. Uh, <laughs> yes. W w was the drive into Randolph nice and safe and strong? Um, it, it definitely got better. It's, I mean, that usually is always the way that it is. And it, it's, it's particularly fascinating for us because we, we moved down into a valley after having lived up on one of the ridges. And uh, the, <laughs> I, I haven't been up on the ridge at all today in the, in the area where we used to come from. And <laughs> I can imagine, I mean, we're quite sheltered now where we come from. Uh, so... It was pleasant. It was it was not bad, um, especially the closer you get to town. I feel like it's a different, it's a different snow belt. We we right, live in the kind right. of the snow belt. Yeah. yeah. For those of you uh, outside Vermont, uh, Kara, Kara, just uh, or the or the Jennings uh, part of Jennings and yes, Macomb, right? Your research uh, well, nicely well, done. Well, we'll we'll ask about that more later. Just charted uh, the. Uh, the reality of living in Vermont, it's several zones. It's six, I think, geographic zones formally, but it's really about 150, depending on which hollow, which yep. valley, which, which mountain ridge yep. you're yep. in. So <laughs> where did you all come from? Uh, are you talking um, 
from both our of from our uh, youth here. Well, yeah. How did you? Yeah, let's go back a little bit. Um, how did you meet? If if that's you, a good you can place tell to start. if as long as you're good, you can't. No, you go have ahead. to behave. I, I can't behave. You can tell. Yeah. <laughs> you better go ahead. I don't have it in me. He does have a sort of a cowboy bandito yes, kind of uh, bandana going you on here. Tell it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I am a Vermont girl. I I come from my. I grew up in Chester. Um, where my parents still live. And uh, Andy and I met, Andy's from New Hampshire. He grew up in the Keene area in a um, little weaver town. Um, Harrisville, New Hampshire is where he hails from. Um, But he went to school in the big city of Keene. And we met doing a performance. We met doing musical theater at uh, the Weston Playhouse, uh, where I grew up basically there every summer from the time I was 10 years old doing theater there. And Andy came to do uh, a show in the pit. He played the bass and we met in the summer of 96. And it was pretty magical to fall in love in that place. And uh, we got married a year later and came to Vermont in 2005, moved to the Randolph area. Fantastic. Yeah. I, I'm from that uh, that neck of the woods. I grew up in Peru, and so I know Weston oh, pretty sure. well. I have a lot of friends sure. in Weston. Yeah. And yeah. the Playhouse is great, and the yeah. Lloyds, and yes. all the history there. Yeah. Really, really cool place. Wow. Um, and then came to Randolph in 97, got married quick, M- was music, obviously. You were in the pit playing bass. This was a catalyzing re- reason to be the- so together. Yeah, I mean, so I was uh, I was a Zen monk at that point, and my bass teacher had from Keene State College had said, "Listen, I got a gig I can't do. Can you go up to the Western Playhouse?" And I said, "Sure," but I had sworn off women and almost everything else, and, uh, except for good rice beer. And uh, then I saw Kara from the pit, and I thought, "Uh oh." I remember that was the first word that went through my head. <laughs> uh oh, there goes all my plans. <laughs> Uh, so then, um, yeah, I just, uh, she was by far the best. I, I hope I don't hurt anybody's feelings. I felt like she was the best <laughs> dancer. Uh, one of the best that I'd ever seen natural, uh, Kara's a beautiful dancer. Hmm. So, uh, it was heaven to just sit there in the pit and watch her. And, uh, when you're in a pit orchestra, sometimes it's very difficult to keep time correctly with the dancers on stage, but Kara made it easy. Uh, she just had good rhythm. Wow. Yeah. So it was all about the beat. Yeah, yeah. And huh. actually, she, Kara taught herself guitar um, mm. not that long ago. Um, yeah. I knew she'd be good because she has good rhythm, but um, my mask has fallen off. Sorry. Um, <laughs> You'll never rob a, a drugstore with, <laughs> with a falling mask. You know, it doesn't work out well. <laughs> I, I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> so glad that more people aren't taking advantage of their masks in <laughs> thus in such a way. And, yeah, and yeah. you, yeah, probably yeah. never. But you, uh, you know, you. So, so the Zen uh, monkdom went away. Well, I mean, it's that's the great thing about zazen, and it's a it's a life practice. And I didn't quite understand it as I, I feel like I understand it a little better now as it's life. And it's being, so I've been able to use a lot of that um, in my daily life still. Well, it sure seems yeah. it sure comes through in your music, you know, Thank from you. both of you. It seems like uh, there's just a serenity and uh, a peace mm-hmm. um, about your music that mm. is really, really profound. I, I've I've played your music a little bit on my radio show uh, the last couple of years. Uh, enjoyed "Leave the Light On." quite a bit and uh it definitely comes through um through your performance here tonight it's the, maybe the second time i've seen you perform and uh through through your studio recordings really mm. really that that just exudes go back to uh one thing you mentioned between songs was that you have a country well, country and a punk background too yeah. <laughs> and then trained in jazz and 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 but your folk yeah. Take us through that. Well, okay. How do you... Uh, my dad, 
my dad is a great country music lover and a very good guitarist. And mm -hmm. I was very, very fortunate to grow up that way, um, where my mother played clarinet. My grandmother was a piano teacher. Uh, my dad played instruments, banjo and guitar, and he taught me all of that. And my grandmother taught me the piano. And so we were always, always playing music. Uh, but it was either classical or my dad hates classical. So it was country when I was home and classical with my grandmother. Um, and from there, I mean, pretty early on in elementary school, we started to get into, this is going to make me old probably, but Joan Jett mm -hmm. and Kiss mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. And I took a divergent way that didn't please my father for a while. Uh, and that led into rock bands in high school and uh, then even in the college. Um, and I went to college for classical guitar, um, but my, I loved my teacher, but he ended up leaving uh, and so I had played electric bass also, and I met a double bass player, Don Baldini, who uh, took me on, and they started a bass program at Keene State College f for me, and it's grown quite a bit since then. Uh, that was fantastic. And that's where Don, Don was so great at jazz and classical that I developed a love for the jazz too. Uh, just the impro improvising, it's so creative. Mm. And the... The, there is a structure, but but nothing is planned. Um, you just go how you're being moved, and uh, the more that you're prepared and practiced, the more you can play what you hear in your heart. And I loved it. I still do to this mm. day. Uh, I love the jazz. Mm. Um, mm. But every once in a while, I just about go nuts to just kick something on stage and <laughs> scream and throw a guitar and... <laughs> It's terrible. I know it's a bad, bad Well, that's thing. that's connected, right? Jazz, you mean, you're saying that's different than jazz, no, but more punk? No, thank or that you, Jamie. Is... What's that? No, I appreciate that you asked that question. I mean, obviously in jazz, it's a it can be a deeper musical experience, uh, theory-wise, in lots of different ways. But uh, some of the punk, and then as we got more uh, in high school, as we got more into the Grateful Dead and things, of that nature, fish, um, they were all encouraging improvisation, which was fantastic. So right. we were able to cross back and forth from jazz to rock. Um, and all of that is on a foundation of folk for me because I grew up in the Harrisville, Peterborough, uh, Dublin, New Hampshire area, and there are several great folk venues there where we would see uh, the most incredible uh, musicians and songwriters uh, for, and, and for me and my classmates, even in elementary school, the thing to be was a songwriter. That was the hero that we mm. wanted to be. Um, those were the guys and, and the women that we really looked up to and followed, and uh, that's what we wanted to do. That so, folk tradition down in that area, I don't yeah. know much except Sam Amidon and Brattleboro and Keene. I know, uh, do you know, uh, I'm sure you do, Lissa Schneckenberger. Um, mm. uh, she and her husband uh, are also uh, accomplished uh, musicians down there. They just did a, a year ago, they did a uh, bike ride from Brattleboro down to Greenfield up to Petersboro, did three concerts with their nine-year-old son, cello on the back, wow. <laughs> um, to... I'm going to screw this up, but it was, it was a fundraising event, I, I want to say, I believe, about climate change. Huh. Um, she is part of a group also called Low Lily. Oh, um, I've heard of Low Lily, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I don't know anything about that area, but it seems like there's uh, just strong uh, folk tradition down in that area. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there was, yeah. yeah. Of course, Amherst. Right. Mass isn't that far away. Right, right. Yeah, it was a rich place to grow up. Yeah, I'm always forever in my mind. One of those lyrics that you know circulates in my mind, like we all have, is uh, the Berkshires seem dreamlike on account of that frosting. That's a little bit more oh. west, but you know the James Taylor <laughs> yeah. lyric, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I'm from Southern Vermont, but I didn't go over there too too much. But I've I've just in the last 20 years heard great things mm. about that area. A uh, lot of instruments. Uh, the bass didn't arrive because uh, I guess Kara had a, 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 a Pete Townsend moment or a, <laughs> so, something happened to the bass and didn't make it. What, do you want to chart that 
experience today? Or? Um, no, I think we'll just, <laughs> we'll just pass right over that. I'm actually, I mean, what's fun about writing music and writing songs is the two of us, because we have both, both of us other things that we do most of the time in our lives. And, you know, Andy's a full-time carpenter and stonemason. And I, I love being home with my kids and I've got, you know, I've homeschooled most of them. Um, we kind of find moments where we'll, an inspiration and we'll just write usually separately. And then when we come together, you know, I, I'm always, I might have an idea in my mind, especially if I write a song and Andy is the one that has so much diversity with the instruments. He's, I mean, he grew up playing all kinds of different things and it's he's the one that went to school and got music theory and he's just he's very scary mm -hmm. <laughs> so whenever he picks up whenever I bring a new song that I've written I might have an idea in my mind of maybe what instrument I I hear with it and I can either suggest that or most of the time when I play him something that I've written then he just will pick he'll just grab one of one of the instruments and just it it always brings so much life and so much magic to the song um and it it's a it's a really fun process but the bass i mean this this song that andy wrote um that he shared where i was playing the sleigh, sleigh bells for is um i i definitely don't have I'm not a bass player at all. And I, I was trying to think, what can I add to this song? Because it's, it's definitely has that kind of roots rock feel to it. And I, I can't really, there's only so much you can do with two guitars all the time. Right. And so right. um, I thought, okay, you know, he, he sort of challenged me when, last Christmas when he introduced the song to me and said, what and it was, do you think about? And it was a Christmas song? Yeah, right. yeah. Oh, Benny? Benny. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. yeah. Um, and and I thought, okay, well, I'll just give it a shot. And and like I, like we said, Andy said we played it once. We played it once live last year at Christmas, and I, you know, I couldn't take my eyes off the strings because yeah, but you were smoking because I case. didn't know what I was doing. Um, so it's definitely I was off the hook for tonight. Let's just say that, and <laughs> we'll keep we'll keep working Sweet. at it. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever be able to wrangle that thing, but. Um, well, all the uh, all the instruments. How many did you bring tonight? Everything you played sounded great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven, and we. That's not even all of them. He we left the accordion at home tonight. Right. Sadly. Yeah, and I just had. And a, he's got a oh. A friend. Yeah. A friend just gave me a, an old banjo lin that plays very much like the mandolin, but sounds like a banjo, so it's better. Huh. So, and yeah. <laughs> last year for Andy's birthday, we got him a um, oh yeah oh this gorgeous gourd banjo um, made by a, a guy from uh, Virginia, right? Yep. Seems from Virginia, West Virginia, West Virginia. Yeah. and it's it's made out of a gourd. It's hollowed out, and it's um, it's a fretless gourd banjo, and it just sounds so soulful and. Mm. Uh, it doesn't have sort of that, you know, the resonator banjos can sound a little bit twangy and um, this one is just so earthy and mm. warm and a resonant. It's beautiful and uh, I'm sorry we didn't bring it. We'll have to... That's a word that I was going to... You You've know, heard them. It comes them. to mind because yeah, it's a gourd, yeah. you know, very so earthy. Amazing. That's, that's really neat. And to play lead banjo on a couple of those tunes I, I heard, that's that's not an easy thing to... To, you know, you have to get through all those banjo jokes that people like to tell. <laughs> and But you sound great. I appreciate it. Yeah. I used to be able to pick a lot more, um, but my hands are tightening up just from years of stonework and carpentry, so I, I've been learning to play overhand style. Um, some people call it claw hammer. But, right, right. Um, but that is nice because I feel like it bought me a lease of another several decades i think i can play overhand it's all about adaptation especially oh. in today's world right yeah. with yeah. uh with all the uh, new challenges that we've got uh yeah. i should mention uh, i sort of take it for granted that everybody knows uh that jennings and mccomber are a married couple with children yes. of their own <laughs> uh and we should go to the name again um even though i don't think we did here uh on this uh interview but uh 
this comes from family. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. The, the names are taken from our maternal grandmothers. So Andy's grandmother was Georgina McCumber, and mine was Lorena Jennings. And we decided to honor their memory and keep the, the, the matrons of our family alive uh, by using their names That's for beautiful. our duo. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Georgina's family had come uh, out of Scotland through Canada to the U.S. eventually. My great-grandmother moved to uh, New Hampshire during the Depression. And uh, Kara's, the Jennings family, uh, Ireland and England, and came over to the States. Uh, so that's how we do that. Yeah. Excellent. Going to the McCumber part of that and the, the kilt, Yeah. I want to ask about uh, the, the biggest snowstorm of the year happened, well, the first, <laughs> and it was a big one. Uh, was there any reservation in your mind, am I going to wear the kilt? Because, boy, the, I don't know what the <laughs> rules are. There used to be nothing underneath the kilt, and in the wintertime, I'm thinking, that's a, pardon me, a well, ballsy I've got my move. socks. I've got my socks <laughs> oh, under true. my kilt. And, and, so. and, uh, my boots. and, and the boots. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. I know. And and the history, the Scots used to wear leggings under their kilts. Yep. Yeah, yeah because it's not too much warmer there than it is here. No, it's pretty. They got the ocean ocean winds. Have you been to Scotland? I haven't. No, oh, it's okay. interesting. My mom's it, my mom is a Campbell, so my mom's family is almost a hundred percent Scottish. But uh, she, she, we've nev- we've always been work working working all the time just to make uh, ends meet and life work. So. We've never had a chance to go back, and I, I would I dream of taking her back. But uh, I'm I'm hearing a Kickstarter campaign starting right <laughs> oh. right now to get Jennings and Macomber oh, over to uh, to the old world. Um, your magical. kids, you got you said five kids. We have six. Six. We have six wow. wonderful human beings and in our life. Wow. Yeah. Do they play at all? Are they pl- some of them all playing? M- all of them. Mm-hmm. All of them play something. Yeah, we've got. Um, We've got bass, a bassist, a guitarist, um, a flautist, <laughs> a clarinetist, uh, a violinist. Who's sort of um, it's the the the. This is the saddest. I think part of the saddest thing about COVID nineteen for for my kids watching is is the music program. It just it's non-existent anymore. Mm. Um, there's, mm. there's really, you know, and we, our youngest was playing violin um, and going to Montpelier for in-person lessons before all of this happened once a week. And when the shutdown, the first shutdown happened in March, you know, he tried to do a couple of lessons over Zoom and just the, he was only a 10 or 11 at the time. And so the, kind of the delay and the it's it was a it was a, a tough challenge for him and I was it was something where we thought okay this isn't going to be hopefully very long and we'll just pick it up later right. and you know things being what they are it's it's just been really I think that's been the saddest part of all of this shutdown. I know there's so many kids who just aren't playing music anymore. The music program just there was no way to make it happen at the school. Um, so um, we've got a, a senior this year, and he's disappointed because he's he was he's a very good tenor saxophone player, and um, was I think has been all all as his older sibling. Um, was in the jazz program and watching all these concerts and seeing him mature as a musician and be a part and watching all these seniors kind of come into this place where they are um, developing their skills and they begin to be able to um, really kind of have some newfound freedom in those skills, especially with impro- improvisation and in the jazz band and to see that. And he's, you know, he, he and a couple of friends had started up a band and, you know, he plays a little bit in his room in his spare time now, but, um, you know, it's, that's a sad thing to see. Him yeah, missing right one now. Of the, one of the bad byproducts of this awful uh, time. Yeah. Right now, it's. Uh, yeah. I was on a Zoom call yesterday, and and somebody else, you know, on the flip side, uh, related that he was doing well as a you know as sort of 
uh, accomplished teacher, you know, probably in his 60s, and said he's actually doing more, but he was teaching adults. And maybe developmentally, we just need, you know, it's all about innovation. Yeah. Um, you know, this live stream is one of those things, and I think there's so many ways that we just need to keep thinking about how yeah. can this work yeah. you yeah. know it yeah. you know it's a short-term challenge and especially with kids that are younger it's yeah. hard to, yeah. hard to say I well i mean a year for them is different than a year for for us or yeah. for me i'm yeah well said. i'm ancient yeah but uh <laughs> Yeah. Nobody's supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only laughing with you. Yeah, we're laughing with you for sure. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, it was a great performance. Talk about your songwriting a little bit. You you treaded there a little bit. You you're going on your third album together. Mm-hmm. Um, this last album, will you li- leave your uh, will you leave the light on? I played uh, you played tonight. Somebody, mm-hmm. which I've enjoyed on that Thank album you. and uh, the title track a whole lot. Um, only three albums in what three years? Let's see. Our first Something one like came out November of 2016. Okay. And then we did um, the the newer one um, in April of 2019. So, you know, it's it's one of those things that I think making the leap between having songs that you've written and and then actually being able to walk into a studio and pay for your studio time (laughs) Um, when you're juggling other responsibilities Mm -hmm. and you've got bills to pay and you know it's that's where we we were fortunate enough to have you know both of our albums we raised kickstart you know we did fundraisers for and people have been Mm -hmm. so generous Um, supporting us and helping us get those out. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do it um, because it is, you know, it's just such, it's such a different experience to go from, you know, taking this thing, like Andy said during the performance, think where, you know, you're inside your house. It seems like it starts out being such a private thing when you write a song and and even playing a song for each other for the first time feels vulnerable mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like, oh, what's he going to think? Is he going to like it? Is, it? is this is is this crap? You know, <laughs> this is a junky song. Yeah. Um, to then kind of letting it evolve and have, um, you know, bring layers to it and and develop it into a place where you think, okay, I think we've got something here. And then... And then to think, okay, now we have nine somethings here. How in the world are we going to go in to a studio and afford, you know, not only just the recording, but then all the mixing, all the post-production, all of the the actual manufacturing of the discs and the. Right. So it's a huge, it, it's a huge undertaking and very. I mean, it's it's wonderful. I I. I look forward to doing it, doing it again. But it is something where you feel like, especially in a small community, where you feel like you're you're taxing the resources <laughs> around you of the people that that do support you. Kind of always drawing from that same pool of very generous people. Um, well, it sure seems like you have a huge uh, following, at least regional, or at least locally, and maybe regionally. The you know we had maybe thirty or I don't know how many people tonight a big a big amount of people so that's that's got to feel great and you you derive so much joy in the performance i mean when you're playing together and even in the interview here you guys are just in you know in love it's just wonderful to see Mm -hmm. how the music really sort of drives that Mm. it's nice to see is that is does that sort of take i mean there's a financial commitment you're talking about going into the studio i get that yeah yeah but Oh yeah, I mean the whole honestly the whole reason that we do any of this is just because there's I mean my sister my sister is also a musician and she's a she's a flower grower out in Arizona and she she just makes the most beautiful things with her hands um and that's what she's spending most of her energy on right now she just purchased a farm um with her partner but she she said this thing to me once like five years ago don't let this don't die with the song still inside of you don't something to that effect where you just you can't not 
right what's inside. And, and even if it is something that just for the pure fact of like, it's therapeutic to get it out. It's therapeutic to process things that happen in life. Um, and I feel like a lot of the songs on the first album in particular for myself, I feel like that's where the root of all of those, many of those songs came from for me was just being able to process things that happened, um, to, myself to my children to you know people that I love that are close to me and it just it's a great way to process life it's right. a wonderful outlet the carthus, catharsis in the human element yeah not necessarily focused on the commercial right possibilities right I mean you, it doesn't seem like that's I don't know what your goals are <laughs> but uh, it's it's as a as a consumer of this as an audience member it's really refreshing to see the joy it brings you when you do it mm -hmm. and you know the joy in the you know what's the expression uh you know uh the the cynical expression uh, a meaning uh you know the means to an end you're just enjoying the means mm -hmm. it's not like for some it doesn't seem i mean it would be nice to make it financially you know sustainable but the the yeah. fact that you're doing it yeah. getting it out yeah 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 i like would love to just do music and all the other roofing. You need a patron, like the old school. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, Calling somebody all who, benefactors. Uh, there's a lot of, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of folks coming into Vermont with deep pockets, so. Uh. <laughs> but I, I do have to say, to add to what Kara said, that especially over the last few years, that if we can, the things that have brought us the most joy, if, if somebody comes up to us and says, hey, you know, that song that you played, mm. it made me feel like I wasn't the only one. Mm -hmm. And that has meant so much more and more to us. Right. Just if we can help, you know, even if it's one or two people every time we play, feel like they're not alone uh, and, you know, that they're part of a family. That, that's what means more than anything yeah. now to us. Yeah. Uh, it just the other day, <laughs> I was all black from working on a stove and I went into Blue Moon to get right downtown here, the jewelry store and clothing store to get Kara a present. And... Um, they had our record on, and I, I was so huh. detached from that because I had been working as a laborer all day, and I was not a pretty sight. I can't <laughs> believe they let me in there, <laughs> even. <laughs> and just, just to know that somebody was listening and it meant something to them mm. in their daily life made me feel like, okay, you know, if we never get played anywhere else but the Blue Moon, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so, <laughs> that is, that's fantastic. Seven yeah. Days, uh, our, you know, our weekly newspaper in Vermont, it's yeah. uh, got a great art section. I can't remember which, which musical writer, but they just lauded your last album. They mm -hmm. loved it. Um, and I don't have the quote offhand, but, but the press release about the show uh, 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 had that as a, as a feature, um, just beautiful album. Mm. That last album, um, as far as plans go, with the next album, you said you got one in the can, so to speak, ready to go. Yeah, it's really cool. Well, we, yeah, we definitely have enough songs to make a new album, and we, um, you know, we really. It's it's funny. It's it's like a, it's I want to like, tell them the title, but I can't. No, can you I? Okay. don't you dare! <laughs> okay. Don't you dare! Um, <laughs> but. It, it's it's a fun process to see where you start you know you just can't, you can't bottle this you know the songs come out and you just sort of realize that you have a stack of them and think you know I, I this is the other thing that's sort of weird that um you know that the the digital uh you know the the physical album is becoming more and more obsolete as mm -hmm as our culture changes and as technology kind of really, really focuses on just the, the digital uh, file. And so I started to think, well, maybe, maybe we just release like a single, you know, and, and maybe that way mm -hmm. there it's a little bit more manageable. We can just take one song at a time um, and we don't have to go through the whole long lengthy process of you know recording nine or ten songs and then mixing them all and then sending them off to be mastered and then getting all your your files together for your artwork and you know that whole thing it's it's a long long process right, um right and so you know i, I 
sort of wonder if that might be a direction that we start to take just just to kind of keep the music fresh and coming out right right um but also <laughs> andy doesn't like that <laughs> but also <laughs> enable us to to you know afford to do something you know right. to keep recording um what what is your vision andy so I'm sorry, I cut no, you off No, no, no. It's I think that's the other thing too is right now just thinking, well, we can't really play live right. any, anywhere. Right. Um and and so the thought of saying, okay, well, let's let's try to work on you know, other ways that we can we can play and bring in some a little bit of revenue at the same time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's a th- mm-hmm. it's a thought, um, but it's yeah. not such a yeah. it's such a massive. Not a crazy thing. thought at all. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Carry on. What were oh, you going to say? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm open for anything. It's, it seems like there's a lot of artists that are are going that route. Yeah. yeah. Releasing singles, you know, three or four a year, and then building up. And this is pre-COVID. Right, you know, uh, building up toward an album for the reasons that you described. Yeah. Um, it's it is hard to take a whole album's worth of material and drop it into a studio, work through it, mm-hmm. mix, master it, do all that stuff. Where, uh, especially with the point of no performance, no revenue, how do we do it with maybe a single per quarter? And I do, I do see a lot of artists starting to do that. Yeah, we do too. Yeah. Even even before COVID. Um, yep. yeah. it seems like a sustainable path in a way. Potentially. Yeah, I don't know if it's just because I'm old and I was raised on records. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a record told a story. Yeah. A absolutely. lot of times there was a absolutely. theme and, and you would follow a band and yeah. they would be in a different place on the next record and, mm. and it, there was the whole thing right. to their development and it was almost like a book. Mm. Well, and, and, and I could not agree with you more. Yeah. I am of the philosophy that we're bringing it back. We are going, yes, we're going to maybe change the, uh, the structure and the sequence to singles, but pull it together, yeah. get the new generation to understand this is part of a narrative oh, yeah. story that, that might take a year, yeah. but follow us for a while and start to read the lyrics again. I think we're going to turn. I, I, mm. I, 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 I believe, uh, I mean... Maybe selfishly, I, I am of the same idea. This is an album; it's a package. Yeah. But hey, maybe we release it a little bit at a time, yeah. and uh, and follow along, and and you'll get the whole thing here soon. Here's a teaser, right. you know. Like that. Yeah, that's okay. um, and I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm like an artist. I'm somebody who was that <laughs> like the Mandalorian, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> Part of the story for eight weeks, and then you die for the rest of the year while you're waiting. Right, right. And you, uh, yeah, you, you, you kind of, you know, you, you do get them to the finish line, yeah, but you've nice. got to, uh, you got to do it in this weird structure of the music industry as it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you wrap COVID into that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a challenge no matter what. But I, no, I couldn't agree with you more. I want to get back to, uh, you know, read the lyrics. Yeah. Read, look at the look at the cover art, yeah. and I yeah. think our younger generation is start st- starting to get hungry for that. I, maybe it's wishful thinking. Well, our I daughter is actually our daughter is designing uh, a graphic right now for us to hopefully get a T shirt printed. So she she has been so amazing with taking an idea that I started way over here, and she has you know been. S- so brave to say listen you're not going to hurt my feelings just give me the feedback i'll make the changes whatever you see whatever you just give me ideas and she has brought her own ideas into things and then andy had some feedback and we're we're get we're closing in on a on a graphic design right for on. a t-shirt which um that would be the teaser for the record right? wouldn't it in a well, way well sort of yeah maybe a jump start yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. But it also it, demonstrates the adaptability of the human mind as we contemplate pieces of art. You know, how does it change over yeah. time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that that sounds like your daughter's charting right to that kind of that kind of process, which is how we how artists work. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Such yeah. a privilege to have you here, and uh, oh, we're thanks, we're Jamie. really lucky um, that uh, Jennings and McCober are a uh, central Vermont. Um, duo, and uh, we're lucky to have you uh, in this area a whole lot, and we want you to go a lot further, Scotland and beyond. Um, 
can I ask about the new album's potential trajectory, the target date for release, roughly? Uh, no. Well, yeah, we have so <laughs> the two ideas are a, a small, like a five-song Christmas record, um, and then the record that is come, the other one that's not a Christmas record. The tunes are tending to be a little more. Uh, Mm. a little more rock and roll. I don't know how that's happening, but mm. it is. Um, but I can't tell you the theme because it has to do with uh, what we're learning about ourselves and uh, our history and uh, how everything fits together in Vermont. Right. Yeah, so... I can, yeah, so we, don't, we definitely don't have a timeline and it's mostly, I think, just a matter of us really digging in i think i think this this whole sort of new life that we're all leading has it's i i feel like for me you know i think when we first started to have that what was supposed to be what like a two-week shutdown i was like oh we're gonna write i'm gonna write two songs while we're shut down while we have nothing else going on and i'll tell you it has been the driest creative season i I haven't really, I think I've written one song mm. since, <laughs> since March. So, well, it's not. Can I just say you have six children and I'm sure there's some schooling <laughs> issues going well, on that I, may have affected I mean, that. Yeah. I mean, you've always that, homeschooled, that but still. That was always there. That was okay. always there. Okay. That's so right. Cause because something of the about, I don't, I don't really know what, what the, what the story is, but I feel like that, that whole thing where we're all just sort of like, in this position where we're sitting back a little bit and thinking there's a lot going on around us. How are things, there's so many moving parts and, and things are sort of, I feel like get, everything got really stirred up and I just feel like waiting for things to sort of settle again right. to the point where you can think, okay, well maybe now I can make the plan to start going on this album and that means yeah we have to reach out again to our community and say help us you know make some more art but i think at this point it's it's not felt i i guess from just personally speaking maybe i don't feel like it's been the easiest time to feel like i can start some kind of big project like that it's just I've I've felt like I've needed to kind of hunker in and <laughs> I've done a lot of other different kind of creative things. I mean, um, but it it's it's been so I, I don't know I don't know when but a I don't lot know of if that's going to change. Have been written already or or, or yeah. all of them? Yeah, I guess. Well, that's the raw materials there. Yes. So. Yeah, some of them we've worked on a lot too. True. We, we and you played a few tonight. Uh, the least, Christmas tunes. The Christmas tunes okay. for sure. We yeah, had the a two, the two Christmas tunes, but we've yeah. we've got yeah we've got. I don't even know. You keep better. The track rock than and roll I stuff's do. gonna require the amps to, to get <laughs> rolling. Yeah. Huh? I mean, normally I'd, I've been playing a bass drum. Also, when I play guitar, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to have a hi hat going too. Um, do you guys are you familiar with the suitcase junket? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's yeah, he's got it all going on. Oh, he's totally blessed us. I mean, <laughs> our survival food the last four years. Uh, so uh, I don't, you know, I've appreciated just being brave enough to play multi instruments, so we can still play as a duo. We've have have had other people play with us before, but it's hard to get people to come in. And so sometimes if we can just do a two person thing and we have multi instruments going, that works. So. Yeah, and that was yeah. the nice thing about recording with Christina was we could, you know, we could multi-track and we we did, you know, he's Andy's got all these different instruments that he plays and it was so cool to just kind of lay down the bare bones and then say, okay, well, let's put in something else over top of this that we didn't, we can't do live at all. <laughs> right, um, right. And that was really, really neat. So, um in that sense, I really enjoy. I really enjoyed the recording studio process because um, it offers so many different kind of unique opportunities that we can't necessarily do when we play live. Right, right. Yeah, she's yeah. she's fantastic. I, she did my album, and she uh, she was able to track to my what was in my head, and um, I would make suggestions, and she would just make them happen with the different instrumentation and arrangements that I had in my head, 
she went into lockstep with that. Yeah, one of the new tunes is about Christina. Oh, really? Yeah. Right on. That's great. Yeah, Yeah. she... uh, uh, For that reason. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, she's able to adapt really well. Incredibly. We're talking about Christina Stikos from Pepperbox Studios. She's a great producer in this area. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough for uh, for coming tonight and for sharing with everybody uh, your music again and for hauling seven instruments in uh, through a blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and also a big, huge thank you to Vincent Freeman you, for yes. everything he so does much, with Vincent. the underground, yeah. uh, which he does on an all-volunteer basis. And uh, so make sure you contribute, if you can, to the... Uh, PayPal with uh, Jennings and McComber and or also with the underground. Mm. Any uh, last minute words? The uh, the website, we should say, where do we find, where do the people oh, find you? Goodness. Or, or It's extremely outdated. I mean, we have... Um, no gigs. Yeah, we have nothing really to say <laughs> right now. <laughs> I, we are on Facebook um, and I sort of, I don't know, we're, we're, we're kind of slightly dormant right now, but you know, we'll keep people up to date um, probably on there if anything changes. Uh, that's usually the platform that we reach out on. Yeah. Um, so. Well, you'll get a lot of radio play at Royalton Community Radio, uh, I know. Thank um, you, and, uh, and elsewhere, I think Todd plays you up at, uh, uh, at uh, The Point. And uh, you've probably been on Robert Resnick's show as well. So we'll, we'll keep our ears out for you and we'll push on our end. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. And uh, for uh, The Underground, December 17th, 2020. Thank you, Vincent. Have a great night.